Freeze Live Stream. I'm Danis Cole and I am going to talk about free 3D models as in free don't have to pay for them. I am going to be mainly talking about how to get them into Daz Studio which is a free software that you can use to um, to work with these free 3D models. However, I'm also going to talk about the other formats in case you have a different software. A lot of the same sites we're going to be going to have models in a .obj format or a .dae format or several other formats that can be read into just about any 3D software. So let's get started. I am on the internet and I have my handy dandy list ready. I'm actually prepared for tonight's live stream. So I am going to share my first link here which if you don't have a 3D software, then don't fret. You can get Daz Studio. It is free and it's easy to use. But if you already have another software that you're in love with and you want to use it, say you're a Blender nerd. You know how to make models in Blender but it's easier to find a similar model that is public domain that you can tweak to make your masterpiece. All right, so say you are a poser user and you're like, no, I'm not going to use Daz Studio. I'm an expert. I know how to use poser. Fine. You can get these free 3D models and use them in poser. So or maybe you are using, maybe you're a 3D student and you are using one of the popular packages out there like SketchUp or um, what are they? Autodesk, Maya, um, or another of the major packages. I've never used them, so I, forgive me, I'm not too well versed in that. But a lot of these 3D models can be read into them. Or if you're a view user, you can actually read in models in DAS formats or poser formats into your scene. It's not as easy to manipulate them, change the pose or whatever, but if you go into Daz Studio or Poser first and pose them and have the clothes on them that you want and all that, then you can export that to a .obj or .dae and you can import it into your other 3D software to further work with it. So, this will be useful for many of you. So, um, let's get started. I'm going to share my top favorite sites. Um, when I need a free model, as I said in my uh, little thing there. Now this, uh, this same site has the free software. It also gives you a freebie model every Wednesday. So there's that. Also, if you want to pay a uh, quarterly or yearly subscription fee, you also can get Daz Plus free models every week. So I do that. It's a great way to save money on 3D models, and I have been very excited about about 75% of what I've seen of the Daz Plus free models. Uh, the, uh, 
the DAS models. Sometimes I'm very excited over them, and lately they've been on a kick of offering textures for something you have to buy, or, um, you know, something that you can't use as is. I'm not as much of a fan of those unless it happens to be an item that I've already got. But I haven't run across too many of those on the Daz Weekly freebie. But it's still a good thing. And um, I have gotten some really, really nice ones just with the Daz Studio freebie. Now, another one that I go to a lot for 3D models is Renderosity.com. And I'll put this link in. They have excellent quality freebies and a lot of freebies. They even have a section of the site that is all freebies and it's just page after page after page. I think they're up to maybe 20 pages of freebies. <laughs> so you're bound to find something you like there. So when I'm looking for something odd, I'll go to Daz and look through the catalog and see if they've got something that's low priced or um, maybe free. I will go to Renderosity and my another of my really go-to sites are ShareCG. And ShareCG has lots of freebies of all different formats. Now you have to be careful because some of the folks on the site are new to 3D modeling or they are just in it as a hobbyist and they don't do it much and their models may not work correctly. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag, but if you look for some of the artists that you know and love from other sites, a lot of them are on ShareCG too. So I found a lot of Daz artists that I know and love that put freebies up on ShareCG. And uh, I've also seen a lot of Renderosity artists on ShareCG, maybe under another name. There seems to be some convention that um, maybe when vendors sign up at these sites, they have to use a different name every time. Uh, sometimes the name will be very similar, and sometimes it will be completely different. Last week I was talking about Sanby. Well, Sanby is Wilmap, so let me give you her link. I found it, and I realized, oh, She's not Sandy, she's Wilmap. <laughs> and she has a website all of her own, and it is chock-a-block full of wonderful clothing and a few other kinds of items. There's a couple of furniture items, uh, sets, and there's, uh, you know, a little bit of everything. She doesn't have a whole lot for Genesis 8, but she has a whole lot for many Genesis figures. Now when you go over there and let's let's go over there and I will show you her her site is very well organized and it's a good example to go to. So I am going to take us over there. And um so as you can see, she has some figures you may not be familiar with. Now anything Genesis, Genesis, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, and Genesis 3 skips to Genesis 8 because when you talk about Generation 4 figures, there is no Genesis 4. <laughs> Fourth generation characters from Daz were the ones they came up with before they came up with Genesis. So that is why they skipped. They decided to to um, avoid confusion 
and go straight from Genesis 3 to Genesis 8. There is no figure in between. So if you look at these, if I have loaded a Genesis 8 figure and I see an item of clothing that is made for Genesis, the program will auto-fit. Um, I'm talking Dad's Studio here. It will auto-fit the clothing to that figure. Now, if you want expert fitting, you probably need to invest in one of the many wonderful packages that uh, people have made for making it fit really well and adding adjustments and things like this. But if your pose isn't too extreme, the auto fit feature in Daz will probably do it for you. So that said, now what is this Dawn figure? You know, you might go here and what's Dawn? I like some of these clothing. Now um, on Will Map's site, she has most of these items duplicated for Genesis figures as well. Uh, Dawn is a high flyer 3D figure. Dawn, Dusk, and Baby Luna. Um, if you get a dress for Dawn and you try to put it on Genesis, it's not going to auto fit so well. So you can get Dawn and Dusk for free and they are available um, for Daz. So you just have to remember if you're if you've got a Dawn item of clothing, you need to put it on Dawn. Don't try to put it on Genesis 8 because it probably won't fit. The proportions are a little different. So with that caveat, um, but if you want baby Luna, you pretty much have to purchase her. The um, She's cute. And I do have her, but I saved up for a while for that one. So, but anything Genesis, Genesis figures come with Daz when you download it. So all you got to do is um, say you want to have the, um, and she has a lot of these wonderful um, historical outfits. In other words, you know, you've got the um, Bonnie and Clyde style dress from the 20s. You've got um, let's see. She's got some 60s outfits. Um, so if you're doing any kind of historical work, I'm not seeing it there, but, um, let's see, I think it was the, the, there's the long elegant dress, gypsy style, full circle, I mean, whatever characters you've got in mind, there's just gorgeous <laughs> clothes here for them. And so, um, hello, thank you. Um, let's see if I can read C4 I N 444. Thank you for the follow. So, um, definitely in Asian style dresses. I mean, she's got all sorts of things. Oh, Suffragette outfit from the 30s. Vintage style dress. I mean, she's got it all. And if you're looking for things for your male, sometimes we don't find as much for men as we do for women. However, she has a lot of stuff for men, including a basic military style uniform and uh, a tracksuit. And she has that for females too. Male t shirts. I love these t shirts. Look at this. Pow! <laughs> I'm with this idiot. <laughs> 
I love these shirts. I put them on my characters. Um, so, you know, there's a lot here. An Apollo shirt, um, PJs, bathrobe, royal, rolled collar, sweater. I mean, weekend set. I mean, she's got all sorts of stuff for men. So it's like this cornucopia of male things. And she's got knitted sweaters, which, um, and a male Scottish kilt. You know, wonderful things for guys. And Genesis is both male and female. So if you are, um, if you want to put a dress on your guy, you can. Um, so there's um, anything that fits any uh, plain Genesis, Genesis 1, will fit on your Genesis 8 figure. So, if you want to, uh, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do. And, um, and look at the selection she has. This is just wonderful. And these outfits have, um, you know, they have really worked well for me. So, yeah, check out this site. And let me go and um, get you another link. Mostdigitalcreations.com Now, he does make you sign up for his newsletter, but it's really painless. I don't get tons of emails from him. And boy, does he have a lot of stuff on his site. So let me add this one down here. He does a lot of clothing. He does a lot of static animal models, which I love. They are not jointed, so you can't adjust what pose they're in. But if you need something just in the background and you're doing a still picture, very, very nice models. Um, and he also does tons of clothing. And he also does characters. Um, you know, and they're very high quality. And the thing I love most about his site is the poses. He really does such an excellent job of posing his people. So I'm going to go over there and let you see it. He has warnings all over the place about, um, you know, nudity, but anything that he has that is nude or naughty is well hidden. You have to really want to click on it to see it. So it's safe if you don't want to see that stuff. So Here's his site, and um, so he has the warning, so don't let that put you off. So what I come here for is the freebies. So, and you can subscribe to his um, stuff. Um, how you get to the freebies is go to free stuff. And he's got all sorts of stuff. So he's also got old freebies. So if you're into some of the older Generation 4 figures, like Victoria 4, Michael 4, you can get all sorts of things for them. So, um, and he's got a free swimsuit here. So if we want to get it. We got to subscribe. Even though I'm subscribed, I got to subscribe again. But I like the swimsuit. So I'll just put in my email address. And subscribe. Oh, I didn't put the captcha. <laughs> I forgot the captcha. All right, one more time. All right, 
I never can get these things right. Let's see if Granny can get it now. Okay, I'm going to put my caps lock on. U. Is that a W? Oh, I have so much trouble with these things. I think that's a U. A B and an N. Let's try that and see if it's right. It did it! It did it! And you'll find the download link in your mailbox. And he has all sorts of nice stuff. So, there again, that's another of my favorite sites. And let me go over here and get the link to end all links. Poser Daz Freebies. They have a, an extensive list of all sorts of models. They have everything listed that is on Wilmap's site, for example. And they have direct links to it. So let's go over there and uh, check it out. I can get the ah, get out of my way. Okay. So this is the wiki of um, you know, and if you know of a, a freebie that is not listed, you can add it. Um, you can contact them and they will add it. So all sorts of things. One thing that is hard to find as a freebie is hair. You just don't find free hair that often, but if you're looking for, say, Genesis 3 or Genesis 8 male hair, let's try a hard one. Okay, there's Armani, there's Bob hair. Let's look at this. So this is... Um, Cool. So if I want this hair, I can go up here and it's on Renderosity. I like that. So I'm going to download it. So here we go. I'm just going to put it in my... Uh... Come on. Go up. Go up. And I have a third-party directory that I keep these things in because it is better to keep all of your free stuff in a separate directory. Now, if you're getting it directly from Daz, you don't have to worry so much about that. But you don't want to have to weed through your regular runtime to find a rogue item that maybe you got from ShareCG and it didn't work very well and you want to get rid of it. Um, it's easier to have a separate runtime. And by runtime, I mean a folder that has a runtime folder in it. So if you look down past the many, many directories here, there is one that says runtime. And in the runtime, you have geometries, you have libraries, you have morphs, Python, readmes, support, textures, and web links. And if you go into libraries where the stuff is, you've got characters, you've got faces, you, that's expressions and morphs, hair, hand, um, like hand positions, light, materials, and some of the stuff is not supposed to be in there. Uh, morphs is a regular directory, pose, props, and scene, and textures. Now you will notice that textures is down here, but if you go back up, there is also a textures folder down here. Well, there's templates. I may have moved it. Um, so, there, it's, there's a rhyme and reason for that. Um, 
a lot of artists will put textures in both places or they'll put one kind of textures like textures you can change the texture of your model to and then they'll have textures that are specific to the model and their shape that you're using so there's two kinds of textures the first kind can be used with any 3d model if you want to retexture it you can use these little square textures and the best ones are going to be the ones that don't have an edge that you can tell you know when they're tiled so they're going to blend in when they're tiled although if you look closely and know what to look for you're gonna see that but you know that is the old way of doing textures the new way is to go into nodes and adjust the nodes to the texture you want but that is very software specific the old way of putting in a texture that is a general square texture this will work in just about any 3d program so anyway i've got my model here and this is a renderosity so i'm going to put it in my renderosity directory Boink. now what you get when you download is a zip file now you want to right click it and show in folder first if you're on windows and you'll notice i have a whole lot of them <laughs> i have a lot that i have downloaded and not opened yet um, so I'm not even going to attempt to find what I just downloaded. Instead, I'm going to show you the process for unpacking one of these. So let's do the abandoned warehouse. I'm going to right click and I'm going to do extract all. And when you do this, it's going to offer to extract it to a folder that is the name of the folder this is how i usually do this i could just dump it in renderosity but i don't want to because <laughs> i want to be able to tell which parts of it just belong to this item if i dump it in my renderosity directory it's going to be in there with everything else now you extract the file and you get this and it has data it has props and it has a runtime now the runtime dates from the days that poser was new and echoes the poser directory structure if you have um this is a prop so it's got a props directory for a good reason it's a DAS folder if we go into this it's renderosity publishing that's the artist and here is the item and if i click on that it's a duf file this is a DAS studio native format file now if i go into the runtime it's just got the textures so it is a made for DAS item it is not made for poser poser can read DAS formats but it is made for DAS so here are all the textures that um, and you'll notice they're on squares but not all of them are square and that ceiling one if i open that up it's just a jpeg file you can open it in your photos and you'll see that it has a border 
So when it's tiled, it's going to look like blocks. So that is one kind of texture. Here's a metal texture. We don't want that to look like blocks. And if we look at it closer up, if you look at the edges, it's probably made so that if you tile it, you can't see the seams. So that's another kind of texture. So these textures, you could technically use them on something else if you were sure that it was a public domain item, but you don't want to do that without reading the README. So let me show you another thing that you want to pay attention to. Usually when you download something, you're going to have a README file. Now, I don't see one in this, which is odd, unless there is, no, there is not a README with this. But because it's a renderosity item, I can just look at the, um, you know, if it doesn't have a README, then there's probably nothing complicated about it. You just find it in your Daz Studio and use it. But it's not ready to use yet. So the first thing you're going to do is, um, now if it has a renderosity license, then generally you can use it for renders. There is no problem with that. So even an item that has severe restrictions on the licensing, usually you can render it and it's a 2D picture and as long as it isn't um, so that you can copy that texture off of the blocks, then it should be okay for commercial use, like a book cover. So that said, you know, the renderosity license allows for renders. As long as you are not trading the package that you just downloaded and trying to upload it to another site and claim it as yours, that's illegal. So that's what they're talking about mainly when you see in the licensing where it says, um, this is my product and you can't use it. Um, you know, you can't put it in a video game or um, include it in a package of freebies for whatever site. That's not kosher. So that's what that kind of licensing is usually talking about. But I like to check the README anyway before using an item in a book cover just in case. So, as this is, it's not ready to be used by Daz Studio yet. What you need to do is copy these three directories. And you're going to copy them into your Renderosity directory, like so. And it's moving them. I didn't want them, well... Yeah, I did. I did want to move. Yes. All right. And it has 25 files with the same names. This may be an update to what I already had in there because I've had some of these items in there a few years. It might be the same thing. So I can look at it and I can see that um, these are newer, but that's just because I just opened the package. So I'm not sure if it's actually newer or not, but I, you know, the files that are in there are from 2021. This is probably either the same age or newer. So I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite them. Well, I don't need to override them if they're in there. 
I don't see any obvious differences. So I'm not going to overwrite them. I'm just going to cancel this. So apparently I already installed this product. So once it is in the renderosity directory, then I've got a runtime down here. If I can see it for the, <laughs> it's like, whoa. Okay. Yeah, but, um, all right, this is the runtime. So if I want to make this whole runtime, whatever I've got in the runtime available to my third party directory, I just drag that up there. Now, if I was going to be really careful about this, I would test it while it's still in the renderosity directory. But I'm just going to drop it in. And I'm going to skip anything that's already there. And I'm going to say yes. Put it in. Do this for all current items. This is just saying, oh, I found a folder that's already there. And just um, merging the folder doesn't do anything. So I'm going to do that. It'll warn me if there are any files that are duplicates. So it's moving them. And then the fun part begins when it tells me, oh, I found some of these files. What do you want me to do? And... Uh, It'll move anything that it does not find. It's only the files that are already in there that it's going to squeak about. So, you know, you probably don't have as many files as I do. <laughs> I really love freebies and I download a lot of them. I do. Now, just the runtime won't be enough. What I also need to do is find the regular files. So, most of these like this, I can just and see it found 64 files. So, I can look at it and Pretty much, if they're already there, I probably don't need to bother unless I've gotten an update. And it's not obvious from looking at the files. Now, you see all these OBJ files? These are the geometry files that it puts in the geometries directory. So all of these OBJs are the actual model as it came out of Blender or wherever they created it. So, you know, that's what that is. And then you've got a PNG. This is a preview file. Then you've got... La 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 la. Lots of preview files. And... Daz creates a preview file of every pose. So these are poses. Now, PP2 is a poser pose file. Poser has very specific file names for every little bit of the program. So if it's a pose, it's a PB, PP2. If it's a prop, it is a... Uh, I don't know all of them, but I'm seeing that this is a left hand, so I know it's a pose. It may use the same extension for props. I, and then PY is a Python file. That's a program that runs to tell the program what to do. PYC is also a Python file. 
Then you got um, text files, which um, may be just a text file, but with a name like plus data, that is probably something that the program needs to read. Then you've got Jesse DAT. DAT is data. So you've got that. You've got um, a PDF, how to use it. That's for us to read. That's a README file. Then you've got uh, PNGs, little pictures for your icons. Then you've got PNGs for your textures and stuff like that. And these are magnet files that, um, you know, so I've got some older stuff in there because Jessie is a poser figure. She is not a Daz figure. So magnets are things that make the clothing conform like it's supposed to. That's kind of the old way that they used to have to do it. So there's all sorts of things in here. And there is um, a metal JPG that is a texture file. So there's all sorts of things. I think that I can probably just keep what's in there because I am not seeing any difference in how many bytes these files are. So I'm going to take a gamble and assume that nothing is different. However, the guide is less kilobytes. That's a sign that this might be an old, uh, yeah, older file. Hmm. So maybe that's a sign that I do not want to replace this because the guide should be bigger, not smaller, I would think. So, yeah, that's kind of made my mind up. I am going to keep the files in the thumbs database file. The This keeps track of your thumbnails, your little bitty pictures of your items, and that is bigger in the files I've already got there. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to do continue, and it's just going to move what is not there. Now you may decide differently every time you do an archive. So just letting you know that there is no hard and fast rule when you are, you've already got files someplace and you're copying more to it. But I did give you a little bit of my thought process on that and why I made the decision I made. So, and that's a lot of files. So I'm going to let it do its thing. And I also need to copy data and the other system files. So I'm going to look for the data directory. Where is it? And I have a lot of files in here. So I know from experience that I'm going to want the data file. So I'm looking for data, 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 data. There it is. So I'm going to copy this over to third party. And it's going to be the same sort of deal. And there's all current items. I want it, all the directories it matches. I want it to copy to them. Now I'm going to decide for each file. And I'm looking at the number of bytes. Because heaven knows when I downloaded most of this. And I'm going to say anything that's already there, I'm going to just stick with that. 
if you are copying something for the first time, you probably aren't going to see this at all. But I have been collecting models for many, many years, and a lot of times I'll forget I have a model and download it again. And most of the time that doesn't hurt anything, but, you know, if I don't, realize that I've got an update to a model, of course, then I'm not going to get the update if I just stand pat with what I've got. So, yeah, <laughs> 10,000 little bitty decision. All right, now I'm also going to want other DAS directories. Now, the documentation I can get later. Um, well, I could, but, and you'll notice I've got documentation, documentations, and documents. Artists are not uniform on how they do this. You have misspelling sometimes. So this is why I've got different documentations. So. I can put the documentation up there in third party and it will ask me the same stuff. So I'm going to get documentation. I'm going to go down. I'm looking for environments. I want that folder. Yes, I want it. And character. We should have character. So I will look for... Now, contents is an interesting one. Generally, anything you've got in your contents, it shouldn't be called contents. So I'm going to do documentation. And I'm going to go into that, and whoa, look at all that. Okay, we want to copy all of that to third party. Okay. Well, actually, we're moving it. Yeah, we're moving those. Okay. Anything in contents, Daz will not see. So, if you have a... Um, the artist didn't know that you're supposed to not have things in a contents folder, then you may install the item and Daz won't see it. So you have to go into any contents folders and make sure you have the stuff out of there. So now I just have that. And in fact, since I know this is cleaned out, I'm going to delete it. So um, maybe somebody was new and they were learning how to package their items for freebies. So you run into that too. So let me look through and da 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 da. And that's going pretty well. I'm not seeing a character folder, but that's not that unusual because your character folder is going to be people. But you might see character if it's a non-human figure, if it's a robot, or if it's an animal, you know, and you might have an animals folder for animals. So... I'm going to check that, and I'm not seeing, let's see, Alien Alley, Animals, I'm not seeing anything in the Animals folder, so I'm just going to delete that so I'll know I've been there. Now I'm going to go to, let's see if there's a character folder. There's another content folder. Oh my heavens. Yeah, we need to get this out. Okay. This is all messed up. I should not be seeing Genesis 3 female uh, and all that. No, not. 
No. Um, I'm gonna do data, then third party. I'm gonna do documentation. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna say both. If it's a license file, one major mistake that new artists will make is naming their license folder license text. And there are so many of them that they'll override each other and you won't have a licensing file to look at. So I don't know what this is from, but I'm just going to save all of it. I never delete or overwrite a license file. So that's a caveat that, you know, you really should be careful about your licensing. <laughs> um, so, figures. Okay, that's a figure. So I'm going to just copy that. It should be, it should be in characters. It should not be just out. So, yeah, some of this I'm going to have to go back. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to put all that there. Yes. Do it. Thank you. And then I'll get the runtime out of there. Yes, and let that go. Yes, I want you to copy this stuff in that folder. Let me decide. Ooh, everything's different. Oh, what do I want to do? Mm. Well, I'm looking at these, and they're bigger. So maybe they are updates. That one's not. So I'm going to keep what's in there. But I'm going to generally... I'm going to look down this real quick and see. And I could be totally wrong on this, but... I'm just... Now the DS store file, that is just... A little file that Daz puts in there to let you know that that's an item sold in their store. Or maybe the DS store directory got copied when the artist copied their item. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's a Daz store item, because that would be bad. But the DS store file can be in the directory that you're copying the item from and if you copy that too then you know that's what you got it's not um not a sign of a stolen item it's just there so i'm gonna do that and all right there we go and Figures, vehicles, this is all messed up. Okay, so these I probably don't even need. I'm just going to delete them so I won't have to fool with them. I'm going to put the runtime up there because I can't remember if I did it already. There. Oh. No, I, I want to keep what's already there. Okay, that's what it is. So I'm going to just delete this. I've still got the archive packages, so I can reinstall this product if it doesn't work right. So I am just deleting the extracted files. 
not the main ones. So this stuff would be under, let's see, now read me when you unpack a package for poser, it's going to be a read me. If it is done for DAS, it's going to have a documentation folder. Both of these are where your readmes are, where the licensing information is. But if a person is doing a DAS item and a poser item, often they will have both. So I usually just copy my readmes into the documentation directory and hash it out later. <laughs> it may be a duplicate, it may not be. But if it's in its own little directory, it's okay. Alright, so what to do about these things? Because obviously the artists who packed this, um, several of them, did not know to put that in the uh, people folder. So I am going to find my people folder in third party. So let's see. I need to close that, not open it. All right, so in third party, I should have a people folder. I have lots. I have all the versions of Poser because I have items from all of these versions of Poser. So, um, yeah, it, <laughs> it gets messy when you have older items as well. So I'm going to look for the people folder. And here it is. So I'm going to go into that Rendrosity folder and find, among all these many items, the content folder. And here's a figure. So I'm going to put that. I don't want to put it in the people. Oh, go back. I don't want to put it in the people folder, and that's that little back button on my directory listing. Isn't that nice? I did not know about that until just recently, and that's embarrassing. <laughs> but it's one of those things. All right, so I'm going to... What was I doing? Oh, the trials of being the age I am. All right, I'm going to take these Genesis files and copy them over first because they can just go into the respective directories and I don't have to do a thing. All right. Now, did it just copy those? <sighs> really? Okay. That wasn't... All right, where's my content directory? Ah, oh, I'm getting confused. I do that a lot. Okay, content, boink. Now I'm going to go up here to people. Third party people. There it is. I'm going to grab these and put them in people. There we go. Do this for all. Yes. Done. Boom. We're done. Okay. Now I have to deal with these two directories and uh, I don't really want to, but all right, I should have characters. I don't, I don't, or do I? All right, 
wasn't showing me everything I had, but I don't have, I have animals, but I don't have characters. So, okay, there's figures and there's people. I mean, fig, figures and vehicles. I don't have a figures directory. And we'll see if I have a vehicles directory. Don't see one. All right. So I can look in my dad's library and look at the structure to figure this out. I'm not going to do that right now. I am, it's 923. Why don't we make something with the um, set that I just copied? Um, yeah. Let me um, see. I got the runtime. Let's look at Renderosity and see what else I have not installed. Now this, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep that together for now. I've gotten all the, the directories I recognize out of it. And since this has README, <laughs> Uh, I won't know where it came from if I don't keep this stuff together, so I'm not going to delete the content folder. All right. I'm going to go to the Renderosity folder and see if there is anything else that I have not gotten. I need to make sure I have the People folder, the... Um, in other words, anything that Daz has is outside the runtime, except for textures, pretty much. Anything that Poser needs to run is inside the runtime folder. So you've got your geometries, your library. Um, geometries is for Poser. Data is for Daz. So Daz uses the data directory. There may or may not be animals and characters, but there will be a people. There will be a props. There will be a scenes. And let's see, am I leaving out anything? Pretty much, those are the standard Daz folders. And you may have something odd like vehicles um, it's less complicated with Daz than it is with Poser. Poser has a gazillion different file types, and they have to go in specific places. That's why you have the runtime folder and all of those folders inside it. But whether you're using Daz or Poser, the textures folder is vital. You have got to have textures for every model <coughs> that you are using. Excuse me. So, let me go into the Rendrosity folder and continue with this. So, I'm not seeing a character folder. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see what we got here. Kiriti, but no character. So, okay, we don't have a character folder. Then the next one would be the data folder. Let's get that data folder into third party. If I didn't do it already. We're going to do that. We're going to decide. <coughs> <coughs> I decided not to copy that because they're already there and they're the same size. So I'm going to just cancel. All right. Uh, okay. 
I should have told it skip. Why didn't I do that? I'm going to do that. This cough is driving me crazy. Excuse me. Hmm. All right. This time I'm going to do it upright. Okay, yes. And I do skip these files. So it's still moving 28 items. So, you know. Okay, that's fine. Now. Alright, I'm going to look. There's documentations and documents. I could just move that up here. And deal with it later. So I've got a documents documentation folder. So I can put all that. Are you coming? Oh, I didn't want it to go there. I'm control Zing to get it back. And yeah. I don't want it to go there. I want it to go there. Thank you. And Dothwind Rossity, I can put there too. Okay. I probably should have put all that in the Dothwind Rossity file, but anyway. Okay. So, now I'm looking for anything else. Environments. I don't see environments. I think I already moved it over. Yeah, environments would be there, so it's not there. So the next one. Hmm, I can't remember. Let's see. Figures. Well, figures. I think figures should go under char characters. I don't think it should be standalone like that. I'm going to wait on that. I will look down and usually I have a better system for this. I'm not looking through so many files. When I go through and open these, I'll go in every folder and copy out the guts of it into this directory. And then when I have it all accumulated, then I copy it to third party. I'm doing things a little backwards tonight, but that's okay. And there we go. All right through the case. I don't think there's anything there. Now I'm going to look for a library's... Yeah, look at there. Libraries goes in the runtime. It does not go there. So I'm going to look at the main runtime. Where is it? It's down here. And Runtime has geometries and it has libraries. And there's the documentation in the wrong place. Oh, I have my work cut out for me. Library, I'm going to put here in the Runtime where it belongs. Yes. Okay. Lights. Well, there's libraries again. Oh, dear. Libraries. Go. Yes, you. Go in there. Okay. Now, I'm going... Lights goes inside libraries. Um, unless it's DAS lights. Uh, is this DAS lights or is this runtime lights? Uh, <laughs> Let's have a look at this. Oh, it's DAS lights. It's got DAS files. It's got DUF. So this is another folder. 
that if it has a lights file, this is going to go just in third party. It's not going to go down in the runtime. And so sometimes you have to look inside the files and see, well, what kind of file is this? What, what files has it got? Because some of these you can assume that they go in the runtime, and then the light presets is another thing. And, um, yep, this is Daz. So these light presets go in the third party folder. Now I will have lights for my item. Okay, so then la, 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 la. Okay. I must have gotten interrupted last time I was in this folder because it's a lot to unpack. When you see things like My Desk 3D Library, that's an artist that didn't know you don't include those folders. So they copied their item out and they got extra directories. So no, I don't have everything that's in the artist's 3D library, uh, but I do have these extra folders. If you go into them, um, there's all that, so I can just copy this. Well, I'm going to move it. Yep. Boom, that's done. Yeah. So, yeah, things can get messy, so you you need to keep a handle on this and and figures well I'm seeing it more than once maybe it's supposed to be like that so I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt all right And I will boink, delete that. And my library, same deal. So if it says my des 3D, oh my, look at that. Holy cow, I can't copy that over. So yeah, this is a mess. <laughs> I don't know what product this is. I don't know what directory it's supposed to be in. This is just a hodgepodge of mess. So, yeah, sometimes this happens when you um, unpack folders. That's why I usually unpack them to the vendor folder first. Yeah, because this is a mess. So it's going to take some reading the README. There's a file list in the README. So I can look at that and tell what products these go in. But it's going to take all day. <sighs> but what I can do is take the files that are good like documentation, I can take that up here, I can take data, do this for all current items, that looks pretty good. Oh, 253 files with the same names. Hmm. Well, I'm looking at these. They do not look to be a different size. I am not seeing any that are a different size. So... I 
think I'm going to err on the side of caution and not do this. So I'll just keep the files that are already there. And it will go ahead with the ones that aren't there. And that's going to take a while, so I'll put it to the side. I'll do the environments folder. The best way to do this is do as I say, not as I do, and only get a few models at a time and install them and test them. I tend to go hog wild. <laughs> <laughs> and it shows. Uh, so it's like, ooh, I could use this in this book cover, and oh, I can use that in that one, and before I know it, I've got a hundred archive files to unpack. Especially at Renderosi. Okay, I'm going to decide for each file, and these. look to be the same amount of kilobytes. Now that is not a definitive test of whether a file is updated because in that one kilobyte that it's not showing that there's a difference, there could be one line of code or one letter that might be different and might make a difference in the product. So, you know, but I'm not seeing any compelling reason to copy these, so I'm going to do that. And there we go. Now I've done environments, figures, I will copy over. Hair, I will copy over. Oh, I didn't want to put it in Renderosity. I wanted to put it in third party. OBJ goes in the, um, these don't go in an OBJ folder either in geometries. They go singly. So, yeah, that I'm just going to open up and MTL is materials, OBJ is the model itself. So what I will do is go into the runtime to the geometries folder. Oh, my runtime is a mess. It's just a mess. Where's my geometries folder? Why am I not seeing it? There it is. Okay. And you'll notice that most of these have nice, neat directories, but if it doesn't have a directory, <sighs> it could be the artist just called his directory OBJ. That could be, but most of the time it's just going to be there just in the main directory. So I'm just going to dump this in. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to delete that and just forget about it. <laughs> I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put presets just in third party. Yes. Props, I'm just going to put in third party. Runtime, I'm just going to put in third party. There it goes. Yes, and that's going to take a while. I'm going to put the shaders. I'm 
I'm going to put the templates. Templates are a neat thing. If you want to make your own texture for a 3D model, you will need the template file. What it is, is the picture a snapshot of the UV. When you make a 3D model, you have to unfold it flat because models, even though they say they're three dimensions, they're really not. They're really one dimensional, but you have to, or two dimensional, but um, they give the illusion of being 3D. So when you make a 3D model to be able to texture it, you have to unfold it with another program. And when you have it all nice and flat, then you take a picture of that and you copy your texture onto it. So, yeah, this is what that is. And, oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to just do that. And I'm going to look for anything that's different. If the difference in these, if there's a difference in these files, it will be bold. That will be bold. If, if there is a difference in the kilobytes. And that's what I'm looking for. I am not seeing any difference at all. So I'm going to assume that this is not updates, that it's just a different age of file that I've already installed. And I'll do that. So it's not going to override anything. It will just put the new stuff in there, which is what I want. And the readme's I'm going to put in documents. So I'm going to go up. I'm going to go up, 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 and go to the documentation folder. If I go on this side, it'll go faster. Documentation. Yep. There it goes. All right. Wardrobe. Huh? <laughs> okay. Wardrobe. Well... That just doesn't make sense to me. Well, I don't know what to do with that folder. I really don't. I can copy it to third party and deal with it later. Now these, I'm going to have to uh, look at stuff to know what to do with it. So, yeah, that's a mess and a half. Ooh, mess, mess, mess. Okay, so, I'm just going to leave that alone. My content, really? My content, okay, this is easy. I'll just copy it. Do this for all current items. Yes. And there it's. Bye-bye. That's done. Okay. I can delete that. All right. Um, so I'm going to just go down. New folder. <laughs> okay. Um, you find all sorts of mistakes in these sometimes. And there's OBJ again. Oh my heavens. Well, I guess I'll just do control. Wait a minute. Let me do it by type. Let's see if there's anything at the bottom. If it's all OBJ and MTL, we are good. And I think it is. So, yeah. All right. Do it by name again. I'm 
going to select one and do control A and that selects the whole shebang. And I'm going to go to runtime geometries and just plop all these files into geometries. Boom. That's a thousand and seventeen files. Mercy. <laughs> and none of them were there. Okay. Yes. And there they go. All right. None of them were there, so I had not installed them. I'm going to get rid of this folder. And OBJ files. Ah, okay. There's a template, which should not go there. It should go in templates. So I will find first the geometries folder. These two go in geometries. So, and that's what it looks like. Isn't that cool? That's neat looking. So, yeah, geometries, and this is the template. Now, this is what a UV, UV of the um, model looks like. It's unfolded. So, this is a cube, and these are the panels. And so it doesn't look quite like the finished model, but each piece of the model is laid out. So each one of these pieces has a different texture. So it's going to have, um, you know, if it's all laid out like this and it's different colors to kind of identify what texture goes with what part of it. That is a template, though. It is not a texture file. This is what you would use if you were going to overlay a texture on each one of these. So the, the colors kind of give you a clue that that goes together. So you would go into GIMP or another Photoshop-like editor, and you would mask this off. You would do a mask for each one of these colored parts. And then if you're just doing one kind of texture, then you would over, you would read in the other file as a layer. And then you would use the masking to make the pattern match up with that. There are tutorials on that. I am not very good at it, but I have attempted it. <laughs> so um, if you want a different texture than it comes with, that's what the template is for. So templates are important. So I'm going to put this in the template files. And where is it? There it is, templates. And this is a template file, so I'm going to put it in the template folder. Okay. And I'm just going to put this here. So, templates. Yeah. And there are readmes and docs, which don't belong in the runtime. They belong in the documentation. So... Um, yeah, here's a README down in the runtime. So I'm just going to, I'll move these another time, but just to let you know that, you know, and these P23 files should be in the scene folder. They should not be up here. So there are a lot of files. And look, Blender files. If you have Blender, you can read these into Blender. 
it's really nice, but those should not be in the run time. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, what a mess. <sighs> so, it's nice when artists do include their blender files. It's really nice of them to do that. But they don't belong in the runtime. They should go in the readmes or something so that they're not mixed into the runtime, or they should be in a separate folder so that people would know that, hey, if you want to try texturing this thing, or if you want to modify this thing, here's the Blender file, you can do that. You also need a licensing file to know that it's okay to do that, because, yeah, you can get in legal trouble. So a lot of artists do stuff like this when they're new. So, you know, it's nice if they have a little readme file in the directory with this to let people know that, hey, this is not part of DAS. I mean, you cannot read a Blender file in DAS. If you go into Blender and you save this out as an object, then you can read the object file into DAS. But Blender files, native Blender files, you cannot read them into pretty much any 3D program except a 3D modeling program. And it has to specifically be able to read in the blend format, which is a, you know, it's, it's not proprietary because Blender is open source, but, you know, <laughs> I don't expect to see Blender files in my runtime. So this is why I should have um, done this in the Renderosity folder first to check for this kind of nonsense. But anyway, I have my work cut out for me later. Let's make a model. I'm going to close that. I think I got through. Did I get through? I didn't get through. <laughs> this is taking too long. I wasn't planning to spend this kind of time in my directory fixing things. All right. So I got to OBJ files. So let me go down. All right. So I'm seeing all these things that I just want to fix. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, and there's more. Don't tell me. I just don't want to know. <laughs> oh, I don't want to know about it. Okay, MNO. So I'm in the O's. I'm going to just forget about that for now. Um, so I'm going to look for DAS files. Parking lot. Mm. There's all sorts of neat things in here. Um, and then there's the people folder. I definitely want to take that to third party. People is where your Genesis figures and their clothing and their poses would be. So, yeah, it's an important folder. And while that is working, oh, let me decide for each file. And I'm going to default to what's already in there. I'm just going to look and see if there are any different things. Oh, there's neat stuff in here. Cool. Okay. I am not seeing anything different. I'll just try to be quick about this. Just a quick scan. I am not seeing anything bold except the date. And the date is misleading because heaven knows what date I downloaded these things. That's why it's better to just download a little and install it immediately. Then you won't have this problem. 
All right, so I'm just going to move the things that aren't there. And while it is working, I will continue on. There are poser files. I was watching a tutorial the other day, and the person said, well, you should just not bother with the poser files and just install the DAS files. But what if you have models that are only for poser, and you want to use them in DAS? So, yes, you need to install your PS files, um, because in DAS Studio, um, well, in the um, installer for DAS Studio, the um, DIM, there is a provision, you know, you can see the files, and anything Poser will be marked PS, and anything DAS will be marked DS. So, you do need both. You don't want to just ignore all that good content that's in PZ3 files, which are scene files. Um, you really want to be able to use all of that stuff. So some artists only work in Poser. And there are some really good models. You know, you're, you're like ignoring half of what's out there. And lots of readmes. I'm going to just skim through, see if there's a runtime. Is there a runtime down here? Rose's Fantasy. Oh, Rose's stuff is wonderful. I love that artist. Okay, there is a runtime. I'm going to put that up in third party. Let me decide for each. I think I've already been here. Okay. Oh, there were some. All right, and then the scenes folder. And yes, I want the scenes folder too. Okay, I'll get the scenes folder. All right. And that, I believe, is going to be, well, there's shaders, there's shader presets. That's your textures. You definitely want your shader presets. Um, shaders preset? Oh dear. Shaders. Yeah. Do this for all current items. Let me look. I'll just see. Well, these are newer, so I definitely don't want to replace them. All right. Good. Done. This, I'm going to rename. It is Shader Presets, not Shaders Presets. So. All right. I don't blame them. It gets really confusing. But... Yeah. Do that. I just did that one. Don't need to do it again. Okay. Okay. And then template and templates. And boy, are there templates. I'm just going to put them all in there. La, 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 la. There we go. And put it in third party. Yep. Very good. Now, texture and textures. Ugh, this stuff drives me crazy. All right. These I can just put in. The program will find it. So those, yeah, I can just put in. Um, okay, 
tiles, that's textures. So I'll put that in there. Texture. I don't know if it'll find it. All right, I'm just going to do that. <laughs> this is taking all night. Okay, texture and mat. Oh, I didn't see these. Oh, no. Okay, let me do that and that. And I'll just pull those into the texture folder in a minute. Let's see. True Tom, that's music. Let's see. UV, UVs. That should go in templates. Yeah. That's really templates. So we're going to just. Copy that to the templates folder. Right. Da, 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 da. What? It's put in the templates folder. Das does not read the templates folder. You have to go in there yourself to find the the template file for whatever you're wanting to retexture. So, just so you know. <laughs> So, textures, however, it does read. So, yeah, I'm going to put all of this in textures. So, and hope it finds them. If it can't find the files, uh, there is a provision for you to go in and find them. So, it's okay. And that's textures. So, I'll put that in there. All right, let's look for anything else that might be textures. And there's vehicles. Well, I'll just go ahead and copy it. All right. And most of these have not been unpacked. They are just as they came out of the um, thing. And then there's all the readmes. And these loose textures, which this is just, oh. <laughs> and why don't they give them real names? Oh, my heavens. Those may be a post package, but they're not in a directory. The program is not going to find them like this, so <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff in there. All right, this is just a total mess, and I have a lot of packages I have not unzipped either, so yeah, there's that. All right, let's go to Dads. I'm going to close that. I'm going to close this. And we're going to go to Daz. So off we go to Daz land. And I'm checking the chat. Let's see who's on. Oh, Academy Impossible. Hello. I haven't seen you in a while. And Caxip. 06, good to see you again. L.A. Kaylee, hello. And Sony Playstations, haven't seen you for a couple of days. Welcome, all of you. And now I will go to Dad Studio and try to use one of the items that I just got. All right. So we're in Daz Studio, and I'm going to bring in a figure. Uh, let's do a girl. Why not? Okay. And I'm going to go Genesis 8. I could do 8.1, but... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going 8. <laughs> 
I don't see that much difference between 8 and 8.1. It's really hard to improve on perfection. My following files could not be found. Genesis 3 female, Genesis 8 female. Why in the world is it looking for that? That's weird. Um, I don't know why it can't find that, but she's in. Let's put some clothes on her. So we're going to go. You're not going to, if you do the um, smart content, you are not going to see anything that I just installed. What we're going to have to do is go into content library and we're gonna we're not looking well here's third party so in third party we can look for things um by category so well we could, if I was in the right place. Well, all right. I guess we got what we got. Okay, so if we look at figures, here is a wooden crate which is one of those renderosity things, I believe. It may not be renderosity. Let's see. Third party figures. Don't know what artist because they didn't use the standard format. But it's a wooden crate. Let's put it in. Double click and there it is. Now let's get some clothes for this girl. Let's look at Genesis 8 female and we're going to look at clothing and see what we got and it's taking a minute to read it all in it will eventually come up I think oh well I have to choose a subfolder so let's look at um I could go to Pusey Designs, my favorite Will Map. She does such wonderful things. Let's do this frilled dress. I love this thing. Okay, let's let's do the frilled dress. Ooh, I love it. Now let's pose her. Now see how easy that is? This stuff is showing up here. There's a storm hood. There's, and sometimes you have to click inside to get to these things, but there's high heels. So let's put the Olympia heels on her. And let's look for a pose that is third party. So, oh. Well, duh, I just need to close the folding, the, <laughs> the clothing folder, <laughs> the folding clother, uh, yeah, and we're going to look at poses here. So, yeah, you pretty much have to go inside the artist's thing, so let's see what B Barbs has. Kid poses. Ooh. Let's um let's make a kid, shall we? Let's make a kid. This these poses look cool. So I, I wanna try them. So let's go into parameters actor and we're gonna go full body real world growing up. Let's make her a teenager, shall we? 
so we're going to make her a little, okay, and I'm going to have to take this dress and change the parent because right now it's just sitting out there. This is what happens when you don't parent your items. <laughs> I know better. Okay, so now we do that, and it should. Oh, why isn't it working? It should work. All right, let's do fit two. We're going to fit two. Genesis 8 for now. All right, that's better. Now it's working. Okay, she's littler, so we're gonna give her a kid pose. Let's um, put her like that. Oh, <laughs> it would help if I chose her, not the dress. Okay. And now we can do general okay we're gonna y translate her up and over we'll put her on the box and let's x her back or z her back so that she is resting her elbows on the box. Now let's have a look at what the box is doing. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's got it. Okay, so I'm going to need to do a couple of things here. I need to move this over so she's centered and make her big up. I need to put some hair on her and I need to fix that. I will fix that in a minute. I'm going to do hair, so I have some hair. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. April YSH has hair. Let's see. Uh oh, content. Whoops. baby hair. Okay, did we try this and it didn't work? Um, but that's younger hair than this lady deserves. This young lady needs something different. Biscuits is another of my favorite artists for hair. Ooh, look at this. Let's do this one. That looks cool. Alright. Let's find the hair and fit it to her. <laughs> okay. Um, why is the hair not showing up? Probably because it is already parented. Uh, turn lower, upper, chest lower, upper, neck lower, upper, and there's the head. All right, so I did not have her head selected, and the hair is not there. So, all right, now I've got her head selected. Let's try it again. Hmm. Well, it could be that these are, let's see, well, that is the hair. That is the hair. So that's not a texture. That is the hair itself. It is not working. Let's try this one. Mm. Nope. Maybe these are poses for the hair, and I don't actually have the hair. That is quite possible. On some of these free items, it's not. Okay, there's Bobby hair. I don't like that one too much. Let's see. 
Ooh, I like this. That's colors, though. That is, let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And here's colors. Let's give her something. Uh, that copper wire. All right. Um, it would help if I selected the hair. You have to select the item before you color it. There we go. Now we've got copper curls. Let's fix this dress. Oh, heavens. So what I'm going to do to fix the dress is I'm going to... Actually, I need to select the dress. The GF8 frilled dress by Will Map. We are going to look for adjustments. Okay, she has breast adjustments. She does not have lower part. So we're going to try mesh smoothing and see if that does it. So let's do one of those and a collision. Oh, that fixed it. Look at that. All right. Now let's zoom in on her. Uh, let's move that up a little bit. Okay. Now. Very good. Now. Let's give her a facial expression. She really needs a, a facial expression. So we're going to go to the pose controls. see expressions and if I go all right hmm and go to elegant and let's make her angry I don't always want them smiling let's do a Penny angry. Okay, she's she's not happy. She something's not going her way. She's just sitting up there thinking about it and stewing like teenagers sometimes do. All right, now we're going to go to render settings. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to set my lights. I've got the brilliance set, but it is not parented to her. So I want to change it because by default, Das puts a headlamp in your scene. So that's where the light is coming from. There, That headlamp is just until you put lights in your scene. It's not meant to be the light in your scene. So unless you change the parent to shine on your character for because this is a portrait light it is not an area light so you want to adjust it so that it shines on your character so i'm gonna select her now well no i need the light selected and i'm going to go into parameters and I want just the rotation. And I'm going to rotate this thing until I get the light right where I want it. So I'm going to... I'm not seeing much of a difference here. I want it coming off the left side, my left. So let's Z rotate that. I don't know why I'm not seeing a difference. I can get a shadow over there, but I want the shadow on the other side. Let's try that. Okay. 
let's try this. I want to go kind of up and do that. All right, I think we're good. I'm not sure, but I'm going to find out. So this area by her knee is a little worrisome, but I think it will be okay because we're not incredibly close. Let's try it and see what we get. So I'm going to go in general. It's taken a minute. Okay. And we're going to call her frustrated teen. Oh, remember when I had to do the CAPTCHA? <laughs> I forgot to take my caps lock back off. Frustrated teen. All right. And we're going to render her. All right. And let's see how we do on this quick and dirty render. Oh, I didn't save it. <sighs> Maybe it won't crash. I tend to have a lot more crashes when I haven't saved my file. So we shall see. But there's nothing complicated in this scene. I'm not really anticipating having any problems. So let's see how we do. It's not taking too long, which is good. I'm way over. I'm glad y'all are still with me. <laughs> y'all stuck it out for the long haul. And almost there. It is going pretty quickly. This is good. there we're at, what 95 percent so getting up there 320th iteration 334 96 percent And we've been going for 2 minutes and 25 seconds. And getting there, getting there. Oh, it's 98% now. Getting there. I love Dad Studio. It is so much fun to be able to do characters. And this is a hair I have not used before. Now note that I will have to go back in here and make this character mine because I did not alter her body at all. I just made her smaller. But here we go. Let's look at the render and see how it came out. So I'll go over here, la la la, la la la. Daz renders, and here she is. And I'll switch my screen so you can see. Change capture. 
will go to la 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 uh, photos there we go and there she is there's our frustrated teen and of course I have not done anything with her but I can zoom in and you can see the detail on that face she's really ready to give him what four and what five I love the um, her expressions package and it's available from Dad's studio so there we have it so thank you for hanging out with me this long do y'all have any questions for me before I tie it up? If nobody has any questions, then I will be back Monday. Y'all have a very good weekend. And next time is up for grabs as to what I'll be doing. I might go back to Plotter. I am very excited about this software. I just bought a copy not um, maybe two weeks ago and I've had a chance to watch a good many tutorials today from the website and they're very good and they're short so you know I went through like uh, 15 to 20 of them <laughs> in a couple of hours so yeah and, and I learned a lot of features of Plotter that I didn't know about so I might share that with you next time but if you want me to do more characters in Daz let me know in the comments and I will definitely do it because I, I really enjoy Daz Studio it's fun so until Monday y'all have a good night and I will see you then. Have a, well, I keep saying the same thing. I do need to just end the live stream. <laughs> Good night. Off we go.